Welcome back to Market on Close. Time for a big picture discussion about what's ahead. Mike Townsend joins us, Managing Director of Legislative and Regulatory Affairs, Charles Schwab, Michelle Gibley, Director of International Research. Afternoon, guys. Great to have you both. Uh, let's uh, get the big stuff uh, here out of the gate, Mike, uh, tomorrow or next week, rather. I'm getting a little bit uh, ahead of the schedule. What's the latest, sir? What do you see? You know, Oliver, I'm running out of ways to say that it's tied. I mean, it just mm -hmm. is tied. And we're at that point where, you know, you just get all this, uh, you know, buzz around tiny incremental movements. You know, the polls, the, 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 the sites that aggregate the polls, like 538 and Real Clear Politics, you know, they move, oh, Pennsylvania's moved three tenths of a point towards Harris or four tenths of a point towards uh, Trump. You know, it, it just it doesn't matter. We're, we're tied. We're going to have to wait till uh, next week and start the counting. And I think it's going to be really close. And it's probably going to take a while to figure out who won. Any new thoughts or revelations on how policy will impact markets? Have they given us anything else to chew on? No, you know, there's been a ton of talk about taxes. Everybody knows there's a big tax bill coming next year because of the 2017 tax cuts expiring uh, at the end of 2025. And you've seen over the last month on the campaign trail, you know, both candidates throwing out sort of candy to different groups, uh, different constituencies around their, their tax proposals, whether it's, you know, Harris talking about, uh, you know, a big, bigger tax deduction for startups, uh, for small business startup costs or, uh, you know, a new, uh, larger newborn tax credit. Uh, Trump has talked about, you know, making car loan uh, interest payments deductible, you know, all these sorts of different things. That's going to get sorted out next year. Uh, you know, this is campaign promise land, not legislative reality land. And we're going to have to see what the what the balance of power is in Congress next year to sort all this out. But, uh, uh, you know, right now it's all about momentum. It's about getting your voters out, out to vote uh, either early or next week and see which campaign can do better at it, because it's going to be incredibly close. Michelle, do we need to run our models uh, on things like 200% uh, tariffs that uh, could be promises but not reality? Uh, if uh, we do uh, get stuff like that, I imagine that starts to uh, uh, require some recalculations in your part of the world. Yeah, you know, I think there's still some uncertainty about how that uh, ends up. Um, you know, the rest of the world is watching, certainly because there are implications for uh, inflation as well as currencies. You know, this prospect for a tariff, um, you know, excessive tariffs could be inflationary. But, you know, what is on the campaign trail doesn't always translate into policy once into office, as Mike just said. You know, up to now, tariffs on China um, have been somewhat avoided as China redirected exports through other countries before um, further export to the U.S. But across the board, tariffs may not be so easy to, to avoid. But, you know, just like during uh, the Trump administration's first term, we had the phase one trade deal. We had the USMCA. And so we could actually get some kind of a deal with China uh, that could offer reduced tariffs in you know, maybe exchange for a uh, revaluation of the Chinese currency against the dollar, something that he's been vocal about. That's a fun thought. I like that thought. Unique one. Um, we also got some uh, election action in Japan. We talked a little bit with Jeff earlier this week about that, but wanted to circle back on that subject, Michelle, to think about uh, how markets might respond and how uh, we as traders or investors should respond to how the market acts. Because obviously four years ago, there were some pretty good short-term dip buying opportunities. Well, I guess eight years ago. Well, yeah, the Japan's actual election it may have some lessons for us here in the U.S. this week uh, or next week. Um, the LDP party, which has been in um, power in Japan for 65 of the last 69 years, Offered, uh, you know, they they had a surprising loss over the weekend, plunged a political, um, you know, uncertainty, monetary po policy and fiscal policy into uncertainty. But despite that, Ch Japanese stocks rose. Um, and again, you know, we don't know what the election results will hold, but it just the lesson may be just putting the election in the past could maybe set a stage for let's take a longer term view of what the implications are for economic and earnings growth. Okay, love that. Uh, Mike, uh, last thought for the election and the impact. How big of a difference is there considering the levels of control or cohesive levels of victory? Should we be going through the calculus about market implications if it's like full sweep, uh, all the different houses, et cetera? 
Yeah, you know, Oliver, first of all, I'd say I, I think it's going to take a little bit. Uh, you know, to me, the underrated part of this election is the battle for control of the House of Representatives. I, I think that the Senate is pretty likely to go Republican. And so the House could be really, really important here. But House races tend to take a long time to count, particularly in places where there are competitive seats that are going to decide the margins in places like California and New York and Washington state and, and other states. Um, so it could be a little while before we know the balance of power. And, and so, you know, I, I think people should not overreact, particularly in the first couple of days after the election. You know, it's probably going to be some uncertainty that there might be some choppiness in the market as a result of that uncertainty and, and investor concerns. Uh, but it's going to get sorted out. However long it takes, we're going to have an answer. We're going to know uh, what the outcome is. And we'll then be able to kind of assess what the policy implications of that are. So I'm trying to caution people to, to not overreact to, you know, what could could be a, a, a rocky few days in terms of just not knowing what direction things are going after the election. What's the over under on a contested election right now that it drags out, Mike? Well, I, I think we're probably talking, you know, several days uh, before we know the answer. And then the question is whether there's legal challenges and, and all that. I think that's what a lot of investors are concerned about, that there's just a, you know, extended period of uncertainty where uh, there's challenges going on and possibly unrest and, and protests in the streets. And, you know, I'm trying to tell investors to, to, to you know, not that that's going to be short term, however short that term is. And things will settle down and, and we'll know the answer soon enough. All right. That's uh optimistic and hopefully accurate and hopefully uh that's what we get so appreciate the message thanks guys mike townsend michelle gibley good stuff good perspective and we'll